Hey everyone, so I've been making candles for several years now, almost five years actually, and I've been asked a lot by a lot of people about how I make my candles, what goes into the process, what it all entails, so I thought I'd get around to finally making a YouTube video about it. So just a quick disclaimer, candle making is just as much of a science as it is an art. So a lot of the techniques I'm going to be telling you and a lot of my methods um, they're what I figured out work for me and the materials that I use, but depending on what materials you're using and how you like to go about things, your process might differ quite a bit from this. Uh, so there are many ways to make candles and this is my way of making candles. So as far as my material goes, uh, here are the materials I'll be using. Wax that I like to use is the GW464 Soy Wax. There's a couple of different reasons I like this. One of them is soy wax is eco-friendly, it burns clean. And also this particular wax comes in this flake form. So it makes measuring it out in precise quantities very easy and efficient. This is the fragrance oil I'll be using. It's A Thousand Wishes by Bath and Body Works. It smells absolutely amazing. This is the wick I'll be using today. It's the HTP 105. I've already got a little sticker on the bottom of it to hold it. And then I have these little candle wick holders. These basically fit right into this eight ounce jelly jar. Um, it just holds your wick in place during the cooling process to make sure it stays nice and straight. I'll be using these coloring chips as well. I'll be using a pale pink for today. You can also use liquid dye as well. However, I've just found that to be really messy. It kind of gets all over the place. So these chips have always been my preference. We'll need a measuring scale. We'll need a thermometer as well. I prefer one that's digital. It just allows you to be much more precise. To melt my wax, I use this Presto cooking pot. It's obviously not designed for candle making, but it works absolutely amazing. Once I've melted my wax, I pour it into this melting pitcher where I let it cool down a bit and then add my fragrance oil at the right temperature. And we also need a heat gun. So just a couple things before we get started. How much wax do you need? So I'm using three eight ounce uh, jelly jars. And for three eight ounce jelly jars, you're going to need one pound of wax. So I know that math does not add up. Every pound has 16 ounces, but I'm gonna be using three eight ounce containers. I know the math doesn't add up, but that's the way it goes. As far as my fragrance oil goes, I'm gonna be using 1.6 fluid ounces of the fragrance oil. So the way you calculate how much fragrance oil you're going to need is you have to know what wax you're working with and what the manufacturer rec recommends for that wax. So as far as the, the GW464 soy wax that I'm using, uh, the manufacturer rec recommends anywhere from 8 to 10% of a fragrance load. Um, some people say that you can use up to 12%, but I like to use exactly 10% fragrance load. The math just works out a lot more cleanly and it's just a lot easier uh, for me to work with. So what that means is a 10% fragrance load means that for every 16 ounces or one pound of wax, I'm gonna have 1.6 ounces of fragrance oil, or 1.6 divided by 16 ounces, in other words, 10%. So I'm gonna be using a 10% fragrance load for this. So you really have to make sure that you read up on the wax that you're using. Some waxes perform uh, better with seven to 8% fragrance loads. Some you can go even higher than 
Uh, it really just comes down to both trial and error and then also reading up on what the manufacturer rep recommends as far as your wax goes. All right, so just to get started, I'm gonna turn on my Presto pot here and let it warm up a little. And I will go ahead and pour my one pound of wax into here. And it actually melts really quickly in this Presto pot, and especially because I'm using this flaky uh, form of a wax, it melts extremely quickly, which is another reason why I love working with the GW464 soy wax. It's by far one of the best waxes I've ever worked with. I highly recommend it. So it looks like my wax is just about melted. I'll just go ahead and turn off this Presto pot, unplug it, and pour my melted wax into my melting pitcher here, or my mixing pitcher. All right, we'll set that aside. So this is when you want to get your thermometer out. And it's very important that you keep a very close eye on this. You have to make sure that you're adding your fragrance and your coloring and then also pouring and mixing at the recommended temperatures. So for the GW464 wax that I'm working with, the temperature that the manufacturer recommends adding your fragrance oil is around 180 plus or minus five or so. So you wanna make sure you add it at that temperature. What happens if you add it at too cool of a temperature is you actually end up not getting the fragrance oil and the wax molecules to bond properly. So you'll have what's called sweating while your candles are cooling and you'll end up with a layer of fragrance oil that actually rises out of the candles and just kind of sits at the top once they have cooled down. So you don't want that. And if you actually add your fragrance oil when the wax is too hot, what actually happens is a lot of it can evaporate out of the container and then you've um, effectively decreased your fragrance load. So we're gonna make sure that we keep a close eye on the temperature. When you're using a thermometer like this, you also wanna make sure that obviously it's not touching the bottom or side of the container because that'll mess up your readings as well. So I'm currently at around 210 degrees Fahrenheit and I need to get it down to around 180 before I start adding stuff to it. So I'll just go ahead and sit, set this aside uh, and wait for now. So my wax is at around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my color chip to it. So for the color chips that I use, you just need one chip for every pound of wax you're using. So I just added one color chip and I'll go ahead and start mixing it. So my wax is currently just about 179 degrees. So I'll go ahead and add my fragrance oil. One thing to keep in mind when you're adding the fragrance oil is you wanna make sure you stir very thoroughly just to make sure that the wax and the fragrance oil molecules are bonded really well together. So we're just gonna go ahead and stir it for a little bit. And then we're gonna put the thermometer back in there because we are not ready to pour out our wax actually. So the recommended pouring temperature for the GW464 is around 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've still got to cool it down quite a bit. After you add the fragrance oil to it, you'll actually notice that the temperature does drop quite a bit, about anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees. But there's still quite a bit to go until we're around 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So my wax is at roughly 135 degrees now and I'll go ahead and pour it. Again, the recommended pouring temperature for this wax is about 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've already got my candle wick holders in place as well. All right, and now we just wait for it to cool down. So this right here is why you need a heat gun. Sometimes during the cooling process, you'll actually get uh, what's called cratering or caving in of the soy wax. This is a completely normal process. It just happens when the soy wax is curing. It doesn't necessarily mean you did anything wrong um, and there's an easy uh, fix to it. We can actually just use a heat gun 
and melt the top layer of wax really quickly and when it solidifies it'll be a nice even plane. So it's just about cooled down now and as you can see the cratering is completely gone. And last but not least we have to trim the wick. Uh, they say roughly one fourth of an inch. Uh, you can just kind of eyeball it, it's not that important. Just make sure that you're using something sharp so it doesn't tear up the end of the wick when you're cutting it. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you've still got any questions feel free to reach out and ask. If you're thinking about getting into candle making, I would highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's a very rewarding hobby. Uh, if you do decide to try out and make some candles, uh, definitely let me know how that goes. Thanks.